This is a picture of Lexi, our oldest dog. She is a little over nine years old. A couple of days ago, she stopped eating, so we took her to the vet. We suspected she had eaten something that didn't agree with her and got an x-ray and there was something in there but they really couldn't tell what it was um, gave her fluids all day and sent her home to see if she could pass it normally uh, the next day went by and really nothing changed that much so we took her in today and they had an ultrasound done on her and figured surgery was necessary. So they went into her stomach, removed the contents. She had eaten a leather toy and it was almost completely whole. And I mean, I'm talking it was about this big, not quite this thick. This is a welding glove, about this much of the leather was inside her stomach still whole so what it was was is a, it was a toy it was in the shape of a fried egg there was a piece of bacon that was with it they both had rope in the center of them though well, they were chew toys for dogs somehow she extracted the rope but ate the entire fried egg whole now, the cost of one of those is probably, I don't know, about $5, maybe, maybe $10. Uh, the cost to extract that from her stomach was equivalent to a brand new, fully loaded MacBook Pro with the maximum RAM. Now, she goes back tomorrow for more fluid, so that would probably be able to upgrade the processor on that same computer. Happy Valentine's Day. Hi. Welcome to Kenna Spader Christmas. One of the things I've been thinking about lately is monitoring the battery once it's in use. Now, I recently saw a few posts uh, of batteries that have caught on fire, and it's usually due to uh, overcharging, and I wanted to see if there was something that I could do about that. Uh, you know, to monitor the battery, automatically shut things down if the parameters that I was monitoring kind of got out of whack. One of my ideas was to monitor, you know, kind of the, the inside of the cell packs uh, with some DS18B20 one-wire digital thermometers. Now, why that particular part number? I have used the DHT22 module. It's a humidity and temperature sensing module in a project uh, with an ESP module and, um, you know, to monitor temperature and humidity and report that up to Home Assistant. Um, but I don't think those would be able to fit inside of the cell packs that I'm building. Plus, I can hook several of them together on the same bus, basically, and effectively monitor them all at the same time. Now, the question is, how many can I monitor at the same time? So, I'm building, uh, you know, the packs that I'm making. I was thinking maybe four in each cell pack. Uh, There's going to be 80 cells, so maybe like every 20 cells, I put a temperature sensor. I'm going to have seven of those, so that would be a total of 28 sensors. Um, now, I bought, I bought 10 of these from Amazon uh, at about $1.40 each, and just to kind of test this whole concept out. Uh, and I am using a Raspberry Pi for this uh, so that I can run a Python script to read the sensors and then report that status up through MQTT and then on up into Home Assistant uh, to alert me if something goes wrong. Plus, I can use a wired 
uh, Ethernet cable just in case there's some problem with the Wi-Fi. And then finally, the script would be able to just shut everything down if it determined, you know, kind of locally there, if there was a problem and that could just alert me through the previous chain of events. I haven't figured out how to do that part yet. I think, I believe there are some electrically trippable uh, circuit breakers. So if there is, that would be the ideal thing. So if, if any of y'all know of those, probably looking at 100 amps or more um, DC circuit breaker that I could trip electronically with the Pi. So it's a work in progress. Uh, but I thought at least the temperature monitoring aspect of this might be of interest to some of you. Now, uh, I probably could use a Node MCU module or some other, you know, ESP module, but I'm using a Pi in this case. This is a DS18B20 one wire digital thermometer from Dallas Semiconductor. The circuit for one of these is extremely simple. You need a 4.7K pull-up resistor, a DS18B20, and a Pi. Now my circuit looks like this. Uh, coming off the 3.3 volt rail on the Pi into the resistor and the right leg of the DS18B20 uh, with the flat side facing you. Uh, ground on the Pi goes to the left leg of the thermometer and the center leg connects to the resistor and GPIO4 on the Pi. If this is the first one wire device you're using with this particular Pi, you'll need to add a line to the boot config and then reboot the Pi. Nano slash boot slash config dot text scroll all the way to the bottom and enter DT overlay equals W1 dash GPIO. Uh, control X and Y to save and reboot. When the Pi comes back up, uh, log in and run sudo mod probe W1 dash GPIO and sudo mod probe w1 underscore therm what that does is activate the one wire kernel modules and then you probably also want to add them to etsy modules so that they'll survive a reboot or they'll be reloaded automatically if you reboot the pi so to do that uh, we'll log in again or if you're already logged in nano slash etsy slash modules and then just add these two lines to that file, control X and Y to save. Now, if everything is working, you should be able to run LS space dash L space forward slash sys slash bus slash W1 slash devices and you should see a listing of the w1 underscore bus underscore master one as well as a you know the sensor serial number each ds 18b20 temperature sensor has a unique hard-coded address and so that's where this number comes from now if you run cat space slash sys slash bus slash w1 slash devices slash that serial number that you saw in there slash w1 underscore slave uh, that will open the sensor file and you can observe the reading now the value you're interested in is this t equals number and it's the temperature in degrees celsius multiplied by a thousand here is a listing of a Python script I found on the Renewable Energy website at reuk.co.uk and I modified it to report the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Now that we have one working, can we go for two? So now when we do the listing in the devices directory, we see two serial numbers showing up. 
And I did modify the script a little bit since I'm going to put all 10 of them in there. I created a dictionary to hold the serial numbers and the temperatures and then change the while loop a little bit to iterate through that dictionary. Uh, basically go through the entire process, update the dictionary, and then print everything out. So this is what that looks like with two of them. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details of hooking each of them up individually, but this is what 10 of them looks like. And as you can see with 10 of them, it is taking a while to get through that loop. Now it's still probably fine as far as reporting goes. Uh, even with 28 of them hooked up, it would take longer to go through that loop, but it's still probably fine for monitoring temperature on 28 of those sensors. I don't know how much uh, taxing that's gonna be on the SD card. So you may want to look at the recent video that I did on the SATA drive, adding that to the Pi uh, for something like this, just so you don't tear up the SD card. I'll go into my battery monitoring solution in a little bit later video, but if you're looking for a simple temperature sensor network using these one wire temperature sensors, they're pretty cool. They also have waterproof versions of these sensors. So if you wanted to monitor the temperature in your fish tank, for example, you could easily do that. Uh, I hope you found some of this information useful. As always, if you have any questions, leave them below. Other than that, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Now I shot an email. Game. Game. So I got six of these, and so they... I got five...